everyone. This is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Um, today is a very special session. I'm so excited to share with you guys um, that we are in Austria live at the Flow State Retreat. We have our crew surrounding us, and I am sitting with the amazing Isabel, and she is going to ask questions, and let's have a conversation. How are you doing today? How are you feeling in your body? Thank you so much. I feel very honored to be on your show, to mm. sit here with you, spend time, and also, yeah, just ask you some questions which were like resonating with me over the past weeks. And if you ask how I'm feeling, like I feel super excited to be here with you. I also feel it's very intense being here with all the people and mm. just in the vibe and everything. Um, and just this morning I thought about like how will it be, I mean we already spoke about it in the beginning, but how will, will it be to kind of be back in the normal life and yeah to also integrate everything what we experienced here, integrate, integrate the feelings and also integrate like kind of this new life. Mm. So maybe the first question is like how, because I feel like always when we go into this like if we go into a retreat or in a like a ceremony space where we meet with people who are on this vibe and then I, f I still feel like we all have our normal life mm -hmm. and for me it's kind of sometimes like a it's a challenge to to combine the, the two well what I guess my question would be what what is different from here versus normal life for you yeah or how can we like or how can I integrate more everything what I experienced here and also bring it into my kind of normal life. What w w so what the would you like, mm -hmm. what do you have here on the retreat that you would like more in your normal life? Mm, okay. That would be my question. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think it's the people. Mm. The people and also like kind of the... Take us with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the people and also like the vibe that I can... Just this community, I feel like it's mm. the community. Yeah, for me, that's something that I've, I, w I don't want to say struggled with for mm. the last 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. but that's something that's been a question for me. And what I realized for myself was that I didn't see anyone building it in the way that I wanted it or that felt nourishing for me. And so I needed to take the initiative to do it myself. And that was like step by step. So I every time I met one person that I resonated with I was like can we get coffee or cacao can we hang out and do you want to go do yoga and I was really taking the initiative to like build the soul tribe in my that's what I call it in my head um one by one um because like we were we were talking I was talking to Patrick just now and he was saying like yeah wow this is the one of the first times I've like been in a group environment where we're like taking over the energy in a positive way like wherever we go and um ever since I started traveling back in 2014 when I had my travel company we'd, there'd be 30 of us a country a month around the world so we would just take over a city and wherever we went there would just be a huge group of us it wasn't as conscious as it is now because it reflects you know where I was at but it still felt like that family community vibe and the main reason why I did it is because I wanted my crew you know um, but do you feel like you have people that are nourishing for you in your everyday life I do feel that I have people who are very nourishing for me, but also what we talked about yesterday um, and the sharing was like, because right now I have so much freedom mm. and I feel like this whole freedom can be so overwhelming I, when it comes to the place where you want to stay, because I feel like every, like every place could be like the opportunity. And this is what I feel is kind of the flip side of having so much freedom. Mm that you kind of feel so overwhelmed by all the freedom and then you suddenly feel overwhelmed by all, all the opportunities because like the system is also like creating like kind of a safe space even though if you don't really enjoy the safe space but you still have kind of something to hold on or mm -hmm. something to lean into and I feel like if you just let go of everything where I'm right now in my life like I let go so much so I I don't really know what what's giving me structure anymore mm -hmm. like what's holding me together yeah and you're in that limbo free falling mm -hmm. like I stepped off the cliff but I haven't yeah. necessarily landed I, I'm still I'm still like flying you know <laughs> it's like <laughs> I'm still falling and I don't know where <laughs> I land and this is kind of an 
How exciting. Mm. No, I know what you mean. And I definitely understand, like, I want a place where I feel secure and safe and at home. And I think that's really important. What you were saying about the matrix system, like, you know, the nine to five everyday bubble that most of the world lives in still. I feel that that structure has been built to separate us from our intuition and our source connection. And so when you were saying the thing about like, I don't know where to go, like there's so many options. Um, and I felt that before when I was like first going into this, like, you know, 10 years ago. And then what I realized is the more that I connected to my body and my intuition and my source energy, my higher self speaks to me so clearly. Like, I think you were saying this also, or someone was saying, I think it was Yvonne was saying like her higher self was like speaking to her really clearly. And I feel like the more that we do this, the more that we, we're not lost, you know, like we are guided and protected the whole way. It's just our programming has disconnected us from that. And so the more that we can use these tools like wrap it whatever it is that helps us connect to our source and then really trust it like if we're getting some intuition I think that's the part is a lot of us don't trust our intuition we're like waiting for someone externally to validate us or give us permission or give us a job or invite us somewhere but you're officially invited to Copenhagen <laughs> thank you <laughs> you're gonna come this winter right yes amazing I feel like yeah I made so many decisions in the past weeks where I where I had to trust hmm and I wanted, like, I felt the urge to have, like, permission slips, you mm. know. Like, I wanted to someone that, like, to allow me to, to make the decision. And I, and I was constantly in circles. And, but still, like, as you said, like, there was the intuition and there was my heart, like, speaking so loud. I could not close the door anymore. Mm -hmm. It was open. Like, I was like, okay, I, I just have to go through the door. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I feel like it's the trust also. It's it, it really is the trust. Like it really is the trust to trust myself and my part mm -hmm. and my path. And, and it's also it's one big game. So mm -hmm. a lot of people think like I need to just ask for something from the universe and then like kind of wait and like hope that it works out. It's like no, you can really declare what you want from the universe and like own it and be like I also want a very clear sign and I wanted to come. you can make it very specific. Mm -hmm. But also, well, this is why we're yesterday when we were talking about like the intentions and manifesting of what we want on the retreat. I feel like it's way more powerful to say what, like, declare what how you want to feel. Mm -hmm. So it's like yes, like for you, you're like I want to feel at home. I want to feel like I'm on path. I want to feel like I have purpose. I want to feel like I'm in my with my tribe, you know. And then wherever you go in the world, that's the feeling that you will manifest. And it can come in very different ways than what your physical mind is thinking it should right now, you know. I have two more questions. So mm -hmm. one is matching what you just said. I'm really thinking about this. So we can manifest, right? We are the creators. What do you think is like the difference between like manifesting and creating your rela reality, but also surrender to what's going to happen? Do you know what I mean? Like this mm -hmm. small, like for me, it's sometimes like if I manifest something, But I also want to surrender to what life is kind of providing for me. So how do I not force it, but still like give the way kind of and set the tone, but still I'm in a surrendering mood? Yeah, that's a very tricky one because <laughs> um, I am very stubborn. So when I like when I want something, I'm like, no, I want it to happen exactly like this, and da da da, and I'm gonna put all my effort into it. And if it doesn't work, then sometimes, and it's I don't ever put these expectations on other people, but I don't realize sometimes how strong the programming is in myself. And this is from my parents, from the society I grew up in, um, and so for me, it's it's really about having more like making it more of a joke like making it less serious so Faraday really helps me with this where like sometimes things will go so wrong in what we're doing like quote unquote wrong because there's no wrong but like very off track from what we thought the thing was going to go and then we just laugh about it and we just like have so much fun flowing with it and then that's at that moment when I've just done everything I can to go in the direction that I thought it should be and then I just <laughs> let it go and just keep flowing. But I, th I feel like this is also following the intuition because this is not like, the, you know, Bashar has the formula and everything. But I feel and I think that's great. And I but I also feel like you figure it out within your own body. And like you c like for me, there's times where if I feel like I am pushing something, 
or if I feel this like strong resistance in me or if I just feel tired. Like for instance, yesterday we were, I had it in my mind, like I would love uh, for all of us to go down to the fire and like have this really nice fire at sunset. And then Faraday was talking to me and he's like, you sound really tired when you're saying this. Like, are you sure you want to go? And I'm like, um, n no, but I, I really think we should go and da, da, da. And he's like, ah, no, no, no. I feel like a lot of resistance there. Like we can always do it another day. And I was like, wow. I'm so glad that you're here to remind me of this because my physical mind sometimes take over. And this is like a very small example, but this can happen in every way in your life, you know, about pushing yourself to do something just because your physical mind decided it thought it was the best thing. Or earlier in that moment when you had more energy, that was the greatest thing to do. But then to keep checking in throughout the day or whatever you're working on, if you're working on a project or something, and just keep checking in, like, is this really what I want to do right now? Because... If you just take the first step and get it going in whatever direction you want to go, that's the only thing you're responsible for. I think we get so caught up. We have so much programming around. I decided I needed to be this thing in the world, and so I have to do the, all the steps to go there instead of I decided I want to do this thing, so I took this course, but then I went over here and did this thing. And if you look at my trajectory of my career or my life, it is very much following my highest excitement in the like so random like it's like I'm gonna go over here and but when I look back on it like in retrospect it's all perfect it's all perfectly in sync you know about like building community and um like exploring different ways of how to build a tribe that's really what my stuff is I noticed that for me I can look back on my life and look at themes so for me it's a like community building or empowering women and also in sexuality so like those three things those are like my themes and I feel like for most people, if they are really authentic and can connect to their higher selves, they have certain life path themes that they're meant to do in the world. And then if they just tap into those those things and if they're on path with that, then they're doing great, you know, because so many of us are like, am I doing what I'm supposed to in the world? And and then if they are doing what they're supposed to, are they actually happy in that, you know? And with Faraday and I, we realize like if we are if we are happy where we are, everything is flowing. And then we had to figure out what actually makes us happy because we've been in many different situations since we've been together. And we realized that it's access to nature, access to our community, and then like healthy food and exercise, you know, because we've had situations where we're like stuck somewhere where we don't have access to good food or we can't exercise and we're just feeling so trapped or we're somewhere so beautiful but we don't have our people around. And so after a while we get lonely even if we're together. Um, so... It's a balance between all of those. And I'm not saying that I have it all figured out, but I think it's really nice to know the direction of where you want to go and then just to keep working towards that. Thank you so much for sharing. I could really feel like what you said, like with the, with the, pa with the life themes kind of, mm -hmm. just to really like focus and then, I mean, we all have this. I mean, for you it's the three and for me it's different ones, but I can really also see what, yeah, what I created mm -hmm. until now. Mm -hmm. My last question would be a very personal one. It's about my family. Um, because for me, it feels very challenging to be with my mom because she's very demanding. She's kind of she like she really needs my help mm. in a way. And I feel like super uncomfortable in her in her presence because I feel like she's so demanding. Mm. Um, and if I would have the choice, I know I have the choice, but I feel like sometimes, like I feel even ashamed to say this, but I feel like I could, like I could like close it for a time, you know, like just break up the contact. And I feel like, <coughs> <coughs> mm -hmm. I feel even super ashamed to say, it, like to speak it out loud. But to be in her presence, sometimes it's so overwhelming. It's like, yeah, she's just like, I see her in 10 minutes, they can be enough. Mm -hmm. So my question is how to, how to, yeah, just how to deal with the situation, you know, because I, I don't want to break up the contact, but at the same time, for me, it's super challenging sometimes to just be with her. Do you feel like the dynamic that you guys have is the same one that you had since you were little? No, it changed. So has it shifted from, like, child dynamic to, like, uh, you're an adult now? She's the child, I'm the adult. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And has that, has that been going since you were a kid? Yes. <clears throat> okay. 
so but it's like more on a distant way as so when i lived with her it was like as i said mm -hmm. um and then since i moved out with 18 like there was some distance between us and yeah it was really good to have the physical distance as well but i feel like she just I mean, right now, my grandparents are still alive, so they are taking over a big part mm. of this. But I feel like once they die and I'm an only child and she doesn't have a partner, I can already feel this overwhelming mm. kind of exercise or task, which is like kind of waiting for me. Like once they're not there anymore, like she will just be on her own. And I feel like she will be even more like wanting to spend time with me and everything. So it's more of like an energy drain. Than mm. Yeah. Yeah. If you could have the relationship that would feel the most nourishing for you with your mom, what would it look like? Like if you could just wave a magic wand mm -hmm. and it was there. I gave up the illusion or the idea that she will be like the mom I can just call and just ask for help. Or I mean, I can ask her for help, but just like, you know, like how other people can connect with their mom. Just, hey mom, like I have a problem or can you help me out there? Like I gave up this illusion. So... What I would love to be our relationship like is like just that we can spend time together and that she is not talking constantly about herself, her problems and everything that we can just, I mean, we can enjoy the time, but it's also like very intense. So I would love that if our relationship can just be more light and easy. Mm. Yeah. Have you ever, have you ever said this to your mom? We had conversations, yeah. Yes, yes, I did. And what's her reaction when you do that? She understands, but then she goes back to... I, like, I, can, I have access to her, and we can talk about it, and she understands where I, I'm at. And then I feel like it, it's working kind of for a period of time, but then we are ending up in the same dynamic over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the only thing which keeps us in a good place is the distance right now. Mm -hmm like not talking to each other like she would love to talk to me every day kind of <laughs> so but i don't i would not enjoy this right mm -hmm. now and so if you can't have what you were just saying about envisioning uh, what are you is it more that you feel guilty if you don't talk to her there is a part of me which feels guilty definitely yeah because she's my mom like i have this belief you know like she's mm -hmm. my mom i also have to be there for, for her and like be the good daughter <coughs> I feel that but I also think that's a lot of programming mm. because um, it sounds like to me that your mom is emotionally manipulating you mm. and I don't think she's doing it on purpose mm, for sure not but it's like that's it is there like she's mm -hmm. she's emotionally dumping on you mm -hmm. and be I know this in some ways because my mother does this sometimes when she tries to get me back in the religion mm. where she'll just be like, it's it's a very interesting thing with mother and daughters because you love each other so much. Exactly. But as an adult person, you can like honor and thank her for raising you and bringing mm. you into the woman that you are today and always love her and honor that part of your relationship. And also you have to do what's good for you. Mm. You know, like if it is if it is stressing you out, if it is dragging you down, if it is like taking away your energy you have to protect your energy mm -hmm. first and we have so much programming around like at least for myself I remember growing up I had this feeling that I had to make sure everyone else was okay before I was okay in my family mm -hmm. and always trying to fix everyone always trying to make everyone happy and I was just like a little girl and I remember like being 12 years old and my mom telling me what should we do I don't know what to do and I'm like I'm the kid here you're the adult like why are you asking me what to do and just feeling so angry and overwhelmed by that but then at the same time like taking on that task of trying to solve things that were bigger than me you know bigger than a little girl mm -hmm. should have to do and so you really have to honor your inner child in that and like you protecting your inner child is m the most important thing in the situation so Whatever you end up doing, you have to really check in with your inner child. It's like, is this okay? And you can feel it, you know, it's like this like resistance or this anger. Um, and like with my mom, after I moved out of my house when I was 17, I got married when I was 18. And then my mom got divorced from my dad. My dad was ended up being very abusive. And 
they'd been married for like 22 years. My mom finally left him. And then she moved in with me. And I was like 18, 19 years old. And I remember like working, I just got placed in a law firm. I was going to university at night. I was like working my butt off, like trying to make my life work. We were so poor. And my mom would be like living with us and asking me for money. Because she was just like, my dad always had tons of money. And so she didn't know how to regulate her own money. And she didn't, she did like literally didn't know how to like be in the world. Like I had to teach her how to buy her own car insurance and stuff. And I was like 18, 19 years old. And I just remember feeling like really angry because I was trying to figure out how to live in the world and I didn't know what to do. And then she was <laughs> asking me and then I felt like pity for her because I was like, I can so relate. To yeah, you. you know, and then I had to, I had, to, I actually had a really amazing woman um, who was kind of like a mentor for me all growing up and she came to visit and I told her what was going on and she ended up sitting down with my mom and saying I don't think it's healthy for you to this I don't think this dynamic is working and my mom ended up moving out and but we still like were able to talk but it was like at that time I didn't even have the courage or the bravery to really sit down with her and face her because I loved her so much that I didn't want to everything is connection or disconnection you know and I was like worried of that me speaking up for myself would create disconnection with her and like now since over the years like getting a lot of therapy and realizing okay as an adult you have to honor them and thank them but then you become the inner loving parent for yourself and then if you you know you have to keep if you want to keep having this relationship with her you have to keep those boundaries up even if it's very tiresome and even if she keeps going on and on and on and trying and poking poking different ways to see if your bubble of protection for yourself will break and then she can take some of your energy so you only can share from your abundance you know and that's like I give you permission to stand up for yourself even with your mom and I think this is what's really hard is when we think of these things a lot of times we're like this these are people in the world we don't want them to use us or manipulate us and we don't realize that sometimes unhealthy dynamics a lot of times unhealthy dynamics happen in families and and then this fucks with us and also the way that we view the world because any relationship you have with women now is also baseline from this first relationship you have with your mom you know mm -hmm. and this is something I had to heal a lot with the relationship I had my mom and my sisters in a lot of ways it was super loving and in some ways it was very fucked up you know and I had to really look at it and face it and navigate what what was healthy for me and what wasn't and it's not easy, but it's worth doing. And when you do this, and when you actually, like, it sounds like you've sat down with her and you've talked to her about it, but when you keep reaffirming that, you will feel more and more powerful. And, like, think you will get more energy in your life because subconsciously this is draining you in a lot of ways. Definitely. And with your, when your grandparents die and all this stuff, it's like, I know that you will do what you need to to make sure she's okay, like physically and all this stuff. But emotionally, you don't have to. Even when that happens, emotionally, it is not your job to take care of your mom. Like, if anything, your mom should be there taking care of you. You know, <laughs> I mean, like that dynamic. Yes. Because I've worked. Yeah. There's something really beautiful called family constellations. Have you heard of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did some. Okay. Yeah. I I was gonna say those things really yeah. helped me with the family dynamics because yeah. at the end of it, they were like, "You're the mother. Mm -hmm. You're the daughter," and like mm -hmm. trying to energetically yeah just bring it back into the like yeah. right the balance right structure. Yeah. yeah thank you so much mm -hmm. thank you so much for your answers and also for uh, your dedication yeah. thank you yeah. Ooh. Oh, so nice. <laughs> <laughs> thank you uh does anyone else want to ask questions who wants to take the thank you as well hmm? no you can go babe if you want to. Does someone want to ask something? Deutsch wäre ich dabei, aber Englisch ist von Anfang nicht, glaube ich. Ja. Ja? Andreas? Andreas, stepping up to the plate. How are you doing? Yeah, it keeps going. Okay. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling nervous. I'd like mm. to be in this place right, right now and I'm um, because I'm about to open up and make myself vul vulnerable. But I feel the, the calling and I know that I'm in the right place right now. Mm. And I would love to talk about self-love with you because I feel like this is the thing right now that um, that keeps me from uh, expanding and is limiting me the most, like the 
the lack of uh, self love mm. I, I I experience or I, I I have for myself because like um I can feel such a uh, intense and deep degree of love for other people and I can really uh, ap appreciate them and their beauty and the uh beauty of their uh ex expression and stuff but like for myself like if someone gives me a compliment or says mm. that uh, I have a great smile or any anything else then like um I know that their experience is uh, valid and they really experience this the uh, that way but I can st I still can't allow myself to fully bathe in this in that uh, love they are s sending me and I can't really allow myself just to appreciate appreciate me the same way what are you afraid of if you allow yourself to receive the love <laughs> that's a that's a good good question and, and I and I have uh, uh, actually never have thought uh, thought about it in, in that way I think I think a part of me just thinks that that um this is actually not not true mm. and if I were to go along then something in reality would reflect on me like um that it doesn't really make sense to um take this perspective that I I actually am this uh this beautiful and uh, this um this lovable <laughs> like if i fully buy buy into it uh i'm afraid that at one time i will be conf uh, confronted with the um harsh reality that i am actually not not uh lovable and that i actually um and that this is just a ju just a lie and that would uh, and that would hurt so much <laughs> and it's safer to not try uh, or not go along with it uh, from the from the start you know so you feel like maybe it's a trick to open your heart if someone says something nice to you and your heart opens a little bit and then and then it's like you're vulnerable and you're exposed yeah and then if someone hurts you it goes right in yeah because like i would <laughs> i would i would not yeah yeah exactly uh, yeah. when you were little did your parents um were they freely giving of love to you? Like, did they give you? Did they say nice things to you? Did they encourage you? Did they support you emotionally? Sometimes yes, but um, I think oftentimes they uh, told me like to be quiet or like to behave or to be in a in a certain way. I don't really have clear um, memories mm -hmm. of that. But uh, I I feel that like yeah this that it was like this yeah, yeah. most of our programming around um, receiving love it comes from before we were even consciously aware so it's like you know that zero to three years old yeah and that's just you're you're basically like this little kid on mushrooms just like super open like a sponge absorbing everything like i'm bad okay my parents says i'm bad i guess i'm bad you know like whatever people are saying to you oh i'm good people love me okay and so this is like the programming that you're set this is your foundational programming mm -hmm. and i feel like some of that baseline programming is feeding into this where like it sounds like you just said it you're like sometimes it was nice and i opened up and then they like got angry and or like you know they said no you can't do this or be good or be s be quiet and then you closed again yeah. so it's kind of this constant yo-yo effect of like opening up feeling safe to be vulnerable and feeling safe to receive love and then feeling like it's maybe overwhelming because it was negative at some points and then wanting to close again does that resonate yeah yeah, and I and I feel like this uh, with uh, these people here. Mm -hmm. uh, these people, <laughs> these people. <laughs> I can I can <laughs> I can uh, feel very stro strongly that I am very accepted, mm. and they um, love to to see me in my uh, uh, authentic, true way. Mm -hmm. And though and so this is really nice because I I feel that I am safe uh, to mm. open up here. And how does that feel in your body? Very good. Oh. It feels like it feels like home. It kind of feels like, is this really true? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, 
um, can I can I really really trust this? Because it's it's so good. <laughs> yeah. One thing I'll say is that I you might know this already is that when you close your heart, you close it not just for the bad stuff but for the good stuff. Yeah. You know, it's like you kind of numb yourself all over. And there's a lot of people in the world that live half a life because they're just not allowing anything in because they're so scared of getting hurt. Yeah. They're just like, but it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because if you don't let anything in, then it's just going to be sad and you're going to feel yeah. alone and disconnected. So it's really brave to open your heart and allow yourself to trust people. So thank you for being brave and coming here this week. <laughs> and I'm glad yeah. that it's true though. Yeah. Um, I will give you, can I give you some homework? Sure. All right, it's, a, it's an invitation. Yeah. Um, that, <laughs> that when someone gives you a compliment next time, that all you have to do is say thank you. And don't even analyze it in your brain whether it's true or not true or whether you need to say a compliment back or say anything back. Just say thank you. Will you do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because that I'll really that. helps us rewire our brain. Just You just accept and, you d and it's also because there's something I also had growing up that if someone said something nice to me, I felt like there were strings attached. Like I felt like I needed to do something for them or there was some energy that was it's like almost like manipulation. Like I'm going to mm. be nice to you, but then I'm going to make you do this thing over here or yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. you're in debt now or something energetically. And when you can rewire your brain in a safe environment and someone says something nice, like when Faraday compliments me, I'm like, oh, thanks. But I don't need I don't say like. Oh, you did something nice too, or like yeah. you know, or you know, it, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Do you have any more questions, or more about that, or anything? Yeah, yeah. I feel like with my emotions, I, I, I often feel that there are some emotions in me that would like to like to flow just mm. through my b through my body and uh, be expressed, but there is a is a blockage uh, inside me. And it's just very if it's flo if if it's uh, flowing, it's just very slow and dense and and I feel like this is uh, yeah. And I'm asking my myself how can I um, give myself permission to let myself loose mm -hmm. and to just um, let let these um, emotions f uh, flow. And and I and I feel like it's my uh, it's my hurt in a child that. Um, that is uh, fed up with um, feeling emotions and then getting um, negative reflections or negative responses from the environment. Mm -hmm. And be because of that, um, my inner child is uh, rather, rather just uh, freezes and doesn't want to feel anything because then it uh, can't be can't be heard mm -hmm. and disappointed. And I know that accepting that my uh, that my inner child uh, likes to behave this way is part um, of the process to to feel more again. Yeah, but um, but did you did, were you ever able to be angry in a safe way as a kid? No, I feel like when I when I was angry, it was it was to I did this to protect myself and to not feel completely powerless. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was. Actually, yeah. Actually, this is the the wa way it was. I I I got angry because then I'm I feel power and I don't feel like the weakest being uh, of all. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they say anger is always covering up some other emotion that's too vulnerable for us to admit to ourselves. You know, like yeah. pain, hurt, disconnection. So I think a part of it is also just telling your inner child it's safe to acknowledge the how you really feel because I feel like the freezing part is like worried that if you admit to yourself how you really feel then it makes you weak or you know like something not worthy of connection yeah. and so this is something like Faraday and I were even talking about because he sent a message to a friend yesterday wanting to reconnect and they didn't they didn't respond in a way that was actually very negative this morning and so he came to me and he was like I feel really sad, you know, like I'm, I'm in a, and what he really wanted was some connection. Yeah. He just wanted to be reaffirmed that like, even if I'm disconnected with this other person, I'm feeling sad about this We're I'm still okay. And I'm still worthy of love. Yeah. And so you can keep working with your inner child and also tell the people around you that you feel safe 
and that have earned the right to hear your story and to connect with you in this way. Hey, I'm going through this and this is actually how I really feel. Because even for me, like it took a long, it takes a lot for me to be very vulnerable with something like people think that I'm very vulnerable all the time, mm-hmm. but there's like so much levels to that shit yeah. that like for me to really go down into the depths of myself, there's probably like five people on the planet that has seen me in that way, you know, like on, mm. in that level. But it's so beautiful for me to have those people. And I feel so honored and grateful that they're in my life. And, but it takes work. Like I have to really show yeah. myself all the way. And I invite you to also, find those people or if you have them already claim them by telling them like you're one of these people in my life and I would I'm so excited to share my real how I really feel with you whenever it comes up and I think I feel like the more that we take the initiative on creating these like really clear communication dynamics with the people that we love and trust it's so it feels so safe and so good in our bodies so yeah thank you mm-hmm yeah i guess all uh, all all i have to really do is just to allow myself to be where i'm currently at and be be gentle and just you're doing great you're doing great yeah (laughs) maybe just (laughs) like yeah 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 i i I, I, said just chill i actually (laughs) feel like that i'm that i'm trying too hard (laughs) yeah i think that's the thing is like you're like am i good enough am i worthy of connection and we're all like andres you're amazing like you are you belong here you like we're so happy you're here we're so happy you came to the flow state retreat and you like you are part of this you know you don't have to do anything like you already are it just by being yourself thank you (laughs) you're welcome are we good yeah yeah we're good thank you baby i think i'm done yeah thank you guys for thank you thank you (laughs) (laughs) You're doing great. (laughs) Okay, thank you guys so much for listening, and we are signing off.